In this video, we're going to look at how to create numbered lists in Excel. And this includes both static lists and dynamic lists that change as you add or delete items from the list. All right, so we'll first take a look at how to create these static lists. And when I say static, I mean a list of numbers that doesn't change as you make changes to the sheet. So here I have a list of tasks, and let's say I want to put uh, numbers in the column to the left of it here, so I know how many tasks I have to complete. So uh, there's several ways to do this. One way is in this first cell here, I'm just going to enter a one in that cell, and then I'm going to enter a two in this second cell. And now instead of just entering all the numbers manually, I'm going to select both of these cells. I'm going to hover over the bottom right corner of the selection until the mouse cursor turns into a plus. This is called the fill handle. And I'm going to double left click. So I'll double left click, left click, and that will fill down this sequence of numbers here. I'll quickly delete that and show another way. Another way to do this is just enter a one here in the first cell, and then we can double click the fill handle. When we do that, we're going to get a list of ones, but you'll see this little box appear here with auto fill options. You can select that and then click fill series, and that will fill a series of sequential numbers. So now let's take a look at how to create a dynamic list. Because one problem with this static list here is that if we were to insert a new item, so let's just go ahead and insert a new row right here. As you can see, these item numbers don't change down here. If we were to type in a new number, or I'm sorry, a new item, we then have to take those same steps again to renumber our list because all of these values here are static values in the cell. So let's take a look at another way to do this uh, with a formula. So I'll go over to this sheet here that has the exact same task list, and we're going to use a simple formula for this. And we're going to use the row function. So right here in this cell, I'm going to type equals row, and row is going to return the row number of a reference, of a reference to a range or a cell. So I'll go ahead and hit the tab key to tab into that. Now one nice thing about row is we don't actually have to specify a reference. We can just close the parentheses on it and hit enter, and that's going to return the current row number that the formula is in. So as you can see, it returns a four right here. If we were to double click the fill handle now, that's going to copy our formula down and return the current row number for each cell. Now, of course, this needs to start at one instead of four. And since our task list starts in row four, we can just do some simple math here. So all we need to do is we'll go ahead and edit this cell. And at the end of the formula, we're going to type minus and then we're going to use the row function again. So I'll tab into that. And then I'm just going to reference the cell above. So I'm just going to select cell A3 in this case. And we're going to make this an absolute reference. So we'll hit F4 on the keyboard to uh, add the dollar symbols there in front of the column letter and row number. And that way this reference won't change as we copy the formula down. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll uh, close the parentheses, hit enter. That's essentially going to uh, give us four, the current row number, minus this row here, row three, and return a one. And now, of course, we need to uh, fill down the formula. So I'll double click the fill handle. That'll fill this down. And that formula is dynamic in the sense that here it'll calculate the current row number, which is five. And again, subtract this row up here, row three, to return a two. And the other nice feature is if we were to insert a row, so let's insert a row down here. As you can see, our row numbers or our item numbers down here automatically adjust. So we could add a new task item here, and then all we need to do is fill down the formula in the blank cell, and that's going to return the correct row number. Same thing happens when we delete. So if we were to delete a row here, these will all update and be adjusted, and we have a dynamic list here, a dynamic numbered list that doesn't require as much maintenance. Now, if you want to create a numbered list with even less maintenance, you can use an Excel table. And we can use the exact same formula. So here I have the same list in an Excel table, and we'll use the same formula. So we'll type equals row, open and close the parentheses on that, uh, minus, and then row, oops, row again, open the parentheses. And here we're going to just reference the header row in the column of the table. So this will give us this reference here with a structured reference with these table formulas. And this is just referencing the header row. And this won't change, so we don't have to hit the F4 key to make this an absolute reference. It doesn't change. So we'll close the parentheses on that and hit Enter. And since we're using an Excel table, that automatically fills down the formula. So we don't have to take that extra step. We also don't have to take extra steps when we insert rows here. So if I was to insert a row, 
I can do that, my formula automatically fills down, we don't have to take that extra step. Same when we're deleting. So if we delete this one here, we can do that. Uh, keyboard shortcut there is Control plus to insert rows, Control minus to delete rows. And as you can see, our numbered list automatically updates. So this will save you a lot of time by just using that same formula in an Excel table. And it's important to understand what happens when you sort other columns using this dynamic numbering technique. So as you can see, open files is currently number one in the list. If we were to sort another column, like the task column, we'll sort it A to Z, it'll now be in alphabetical order, open files is now number 12. So my point here is that these numbers do not travel with the items. They're not attached to the items. And that's because we're using a formula and just returning the row number of the sheet and subtracting the row number of the header. So it'll always be one through 12 when we're using uh, formulas to generate the numbered list. So if you did want to keep the item numbers and not have them change as you change the sort order, then you can just use the static technique that I presented at the beginning of the video. And finally, we'll take a look at another way to create a dynamic numbered list with the dynamic array formulas. This is pretty mind blowing stuff if you haven't seen dynamic arrays and spill ranges yet. But essentially on this sheet here, I have a spill range here using the new uh, filter function to filter this table over here and just return the rows for a specific filter criteria, which is a person's name. So I have my list here and let's say I want to add some numbers to this list. Well, we can use the new sequence function for this as well. So in this cell here, I'm going to start typing sequence. Sequence returns a sequence of numbers, pretty simple function, but very powerful. It has four arguments, but we really only need the first argument for the number of rows. So for now, we'll just put a static number in here so I can explain how it works. So I'll just put 10 in there, close parentheses, and that's going to give us this numbered list uh, spilled out into this column right here, one through 10. But essentially we want to return the same number of rows that's in our spill range over here, this range here starting in B5. So in order to do that, we can just modify our sequence function. And instead of having a hard coded value in here, we can use the rows function to determine how many rows are in our spill range. So we're going to use rows. Uh, rows is going to return the number of rows in a reference or array. So we'll tab into that. And then for the array, we want to reference the entire spill range. In order to do that, I'm going to type B5. I can't select it because it's behind my formula right now. B5, and then I'm going to type the hash symbol here. B5 hash will reference the entire spill range. So you just reference the uh, cell that this spill range starts in with the hash symbol, it'll reference the entire spill range. So now I'm going to close the parentheses on rows. So that'll return the number of rows in my spill range to sequence, hit enter there. And that's going to give me a spill range that perfectly spills out here the number of items that I need in my list. And the nice part about this is, is as this changes, so I have a drop down here where I could change the, the name of the person. I'll do that. As you can see, that'll change my filter output here to spill only four rows and sequence, since it's tied to the spill range here, will also return the, the same uh, sequence or numbered list right there to the left. So that's another way to do it with a very cool new dynamic array formulas. And I want to leave you with one quick bonus tip on formatting your numbered list. So if you'd like to add periods or close parentheses or something after these numbers, you can first just select all the cells that contain that are in your numbered list, then right click, choose format cells, keyboard shortcut is control one, that'll bring up the format cells window. On the number tab here, we want to go to custom. And where it says general, we're going to replace that and just add a custom number format. In this case, we're going to type a zero that represents the number in the cell and then whatever separator character you want after that. So you can type a period here. You can see the sample of what it will look like. Uh, you could type close parentheses, and this is a sample of what that would look like. But I'll just put a period here and hit enter. And as you can see, now all of my numbers are formatted with that period uh, separator after the number. And it, and it just gives it maybe a nicer look, of course, depending on your preference or your uh, boss's preference. So I hope these tips have helped you. Of course, if you have any other tips or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. Also hit that subscribe button and then head over to excelcampus.com slash free to grab our free Excel Pro Tips ebook. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.